give us a couple minutes and we're going to get right into it. Hopefully. Da, 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 da. Uh, I am trying something new. And I'm going to Let's see. Y'all hang on in there. Uh, we're gonna do a countdown. I'm trying. Y'all gonna see. I'm trying something so totally new. I just learned, uh, and you're gonna learn with me if it's okay with you. All right. Uh, let's do this. So I'm gonna send a message through text in church. Join, pastor. With Bible study. Sisters, I don't work. Live. Live. All right, y'all. Blessings to you. Uh, hope all is well. Three minutes countdown. Um, and we're going to try all of this stuff new. I'm trying out and I'm doing it on trial, the trial basis, because I um, don't want to pay for it until I know it works for our ministry. It works for a lot of people. I just want to make sure it works for our ministry. Is that all right with you? Oh. Uh, Okay, who should I send this out to? Send it out. Next, bow. And we're two. Six, seven, nine. All right. Good. Let's do it. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. Um. All right, I want to move from here. What's up, Dyson? I am trying something new, Dyson. I promise you, I'm trying something new. But I can do this. All right, praise the Lord, everybody. So what I'm doing is trying something out new since we don't really know how long we're going to be in uh, this type of environment. And so what I'm doing is trying out these new programs that I've got to hear from different people. So this program that I'm trying out right here for Bible study, which you can see in the background, I am in our child care center. But um, from what this program is supposed to do, I'm supposed to be able to change my background and do stuff. Let's see if it will do it. Okay, I don't know how to do it yet. But if you see, it's supposed to change your background and stuff. So this program is supposed to change the background um, I'm supposed to be able to do green rooms and do different places and all this type of stuff, but it's probably not going to work that way because I'm still doing a trial run. But I got this program from Bishop Johnny Withers um, at Unity Christian Fellowship, and uh, his administrators had a lot of time to play with it, and me and uh, my administrative team will play with it. But I want to play with it first to see how it works and see how it can go. Is it workable? Does it fit with what we want to do? And then we'll go from here. Amen. Hope all is well with you. Um, and blessings and all. Uh, let me see to make sure I'm still. All right. I'm still going. Great. Okay. That that makes that works because when I was on. Let me see. I was on that scene. Take that off. I don't know what ever happened. It let me know if we were live. Amen. Praise God. What's so good about this program? I seen Pastor Dyson on it too with me. What's so good about this program is that people I can see people's views and I can click on their views and their comments, and you can see their comments when they come up. Uh, Dyson is called Ecam Ecam Live, bro. It's called Ecam E C A M M um, dot Live. So it's an Ecam thing live. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking Ecam. Um, and I'm taking it into what we call Restream. And with Restream, it was supposed to be able to stream out to, hey, what's going on, Sister Thomas? It was supposed to be able to go into um, 
all our platforms but I got messed up on that and so I'm not gonna try that we're going through Facebook now I'll tape it and then I'll send it to our YouTube channel well praise the Lord everybody let's pray all I want to do is I'm gonna do a quick Bible study lesson I want to pray with you do a quick Bible study lesson um, we are in this moment yeah so we are in this moment where, as y'all know, the churches are making shifts and we're making changes. And I think we're doing a wonderful job. And so everybody, um, the church is doing, I think the church for us doing a phenomenal job. One thing I want to say is I've seen people hit us. I've seen people throw stuff at us. Number one, the, out, the much of the black church and in just much of African-American community, we are still always on the back end of what is cutting edge, right? What is, especially when it comes to technology, and that's what I want to talk about. And so we've had to learn how to maneuver and work. And it's because a lot of us, I mean, many of our churches don't have a bunch of IT coders. Um, and many of the th new things we learn is from our children and those who are coming up, right? And so now this thing of COVID has hit us, and now we've had to learn how to innovate. And what works for the person down the street at your church may not work for you, just depending on how your team works and what works. Everything doesn't work for everyone. And so we're going to try out a lot of different things. So hopefully people will have grace with their pastors, with their churches as they're as we're trying out new stuff, new approaches and new things that are happening. And hopefully that you can begin to kind of walk with us and work with us. Um, on those places, especially many of us who are what we call emerging churches. You'll hear me use that term. Emerging churches are those churches who are usually somewhat of, I'll say, 200 members and below, 200 members and below. Majority of those who are emerging churches, you will find out are, um, I know, I know when you coming back to Usher, um, I got to stop looking at this thing. This is what messes me up. So. Emerging churches are those in which are churches in which many of us are 200 members or below. And why I use the number 200? Because most people who have 200 members in their church don't have full-time staff. The pastor might be full-time, um, but they don't have a full-time staff. They don't have a full-time team that they can play pay because they only have 200 members. And so we call those emerging churches. And with those emerging churches... Um, many of them are trying to find out where they are. Those churches are important. Those are many of the churches who are in our communities. Um, what's up, Malia? Those are many churches who are in our communities. Those is churches. Y'all let me know if y'all can hear me well, because I'm trying this new program out. Churches in our communities. Those are churches we grew up with. Those are churches that give your children um, access, give your children places to grow and develop and learn. Those are pastors who have come to see about your members. And I'm not saying others don't, please, but I'm just saying those are majority of the churches in America, right? Majority of churches. The average church in America only has 50 to 75 people in it. And so um, these churches are, these emerging churches are very much important to the fabric of how we learn our concept of God and learning how to move and our concept of ourselves. And so those churches are now trying to fend and trying to work and trying to figure out how do they reach and touch the lives of their members and yet be relevant and yet not be insensitive to what is happening with COVID. And so we're trying a lot of different things out. All right. But I believe it's good because I believe it's going to push us out of our comfort zone. It's going to push us. And as it's pushing us, it's going to, have to push a lot of people. It's going to push our businesses out of their comfort zone and it's going to push a lot of things where we need to be and innovation is is not bad and it's good and we're learning to work with it all right so that's what we're doing and um we're trying out new things one thing i love about the body of christ that you just saw with me with pastor dyson who's a fine pastor in los angeles in the ninth district um pastors are sharing you know um sharing what they have and working together and yesterday if you caught me i was at yesterday um at bishop's church and i was learning and we were sharing and we was iron with shocker and iron and our and innovation and teams passing on stuff with teams and it was just wonderful to be a part of that environment and so those are some of the things that um you're going to see sunday on sunday 
I'm doing a, a, a straight virtual thing from my house and we're trying, learning how to set up these cameras and trying to just show different things. And then we'll share it off with preachers and pastors and show them what to do with the stuff they already have. I'm not buying nothing new. I just took the stuff I had, adding um, innovation through um, apps and uh, going to rock and roll with it. And we want to show pastors that. All right. Well, um, let's meet up. Meet me. Uh, Second Corinthians. Can you do that? I mean, Second Corinthians. Come on, Oliver. Second Chronicles. Meet me in Second Chronicles. And those who don't have a Bible, let's see if I can. There we go. All right. Um, I know it's in the middle of the screen, but so uh, I want to talk about Second Chronicles. I believe most preachers, um, most pastors have posit i'll bring it down here has posit themselves in this place okay so i believe most pastors have posited themselves in this place and that's where i want to kind of posit our our understanding of what we're talking about into second chronicles uh chapter number seven i want to i want to posit ourselves into trying to move it down okay my wife is trying to, <laughs> y'all, my team is going to get this together. Why will people call me? So, um, Shonda, uh, somebody let Shonda LaFryerson know I'm going to call her after this to rock this. So, uh, everybody, most people I've talked to, and they're, now, I believe in the five-fold ministry, right? I believe in the five-fold ministry. I believe God has given um, you five, given Given the given the body of Christ has given um, the world five um, offices of operation. I believe that. I believe he's given them five offices of operations. I know you was. I can't answer, bro. Uh, five operations. Five offices of operation. I believe those offices are still operating in the earth. Earth realm. I believe them. I believe they're operating. He's given those gifts to men and he's given them for the building up of the faith to 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 he's given it for the building of the church and to bring us and equip us. And God has given us these five gifts. Right. People call them gifts. I own um, the gifts in these offices. Apostles. I believe there are modern day apostles. I believe there is a difference of the modern day apostle and the first century apostle. And I believe the difference is. Um, the first century apostle are those who walk with Christ, who physically saw Christ, right? Adding Paul to that, who had a physical encounter with Christ and uh, um, uh, begin. I believe modern day apostles are those who are um, who are starting movements that are prophetic and that are called for this moment in time. I believe they are those who are setting, building who are church planners and planning churches and ministries and planning and doing innovative things that have not been done before. And so what I will call, I will call T.D. Jakes uh, an, a modern day apostle. I will call Frederick Price a modern day apostle, right? Uh, uh, apostle Price, uh, Frederick uh, Casey Price, brought us into a place of this understanding of the faith and the word of faith movement and him and many of those in, in him, especially with a modern day apostle to the African American church, right? Um, um, T.D. Jakes has expanded our reach on what we see as church, right? And what we have, especially in, um, in the African American context. And I can go on and on of those who are uh, apostles in this day and age there they it, it doesn't mean they're writing new scripture they're just expanding um and stretching us as believers right and changing how we do the things god has called us to so apostles then there are prophets those are prophets i believe prophets and now understand the difference of apostles the apostles and the prophets i said there's a modern day prophet a prophets have been since God since the beginning, right? And so this prophetic lineage has been going on. I believe there are prophets in this day, those who God who have a ear, a, a ear to the frequency of the Holy Spirit, right? I believe they can hear 
uh, in the spirit realm. There are those who are prophets who are seers. They can see uh -huh, um, beyond this physical realm, right? There are those who can, and so there are those who are prophets. Now, there are a lot of people who call themselves prophets. There are a lot of people who have the gift of prophecy, but they don't operate in the office. And I don't have a lot of time to go through the whole fivefold ministry, right? Or you may call it fourfold, however you want to see but I don't have a lot of time to go through it. I just want to show you that I believe there are apostles, prophets, um, um, uh, let's go evangelists, right? Those who have a special anointing, who care about souls saving. They have a message that is a message for the saving of the soul. Please understand that. There are certain people, their message is for the saving, the grabbing, they care, they soul savers. That's all they care about. That's all they care about is that people might come into the knowledge of Christ. There are those who have that call on their life and they love to move in and out of the earth. They love to go. They love to revive um, churches, revive people and cause people to the body of Christ. So you have apostles, pastors, uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, and then you have pastors and teachers, and some people um, br break them up, pastors, shepherds, who are over a flock, and then you have those who I call teachers. I call it fivefold because I don't. The people, many people, put pastors and teachers together. I don't feel anything wrong, but I also know there's a different of those who uh, there's a uh, a difference of pastoring and those who understand teaching, and probably because. I have a calling to teach. I know there's a difference of those who teach and then my part of teaching and then my part of pastoring. Right. And in that kind of context. And so God has given these five fold um, to the body of Christ. Now, uh, among that, there are various voices. There are various things. We always don't kind of seem to get along all the time. And sometimes we uh, maybe sometimes it sounds like we speak in things maybe incongruent, meaning they may sound different, but they really may not be. May, and sometimes they may not be. Maybe they're just different perspectives. They're different ways of looking at things. But all of this is bringing into the unity, unity of the body of Christ in that fivefold. Out of all the people I've heard, majority of us have came in harmony that what we're going through in this time, in this season, is pivoted in 2 Chronicles chapter number 7. Majority of the body of Christ believes that in 2 Chronicles chapter number 7, right, um, verse number 14. And that verse says, if my people, which are called by my name, should humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, the Lord said, forgive their sin, I will heal the land. Now, majority of the men and women of God have posited ourselves to say, what is going on in this time and this time? And they put us in Second Chronicles chapter number seven, verse number 14. That means that they feel that the cure, the remedy to turn this thing around has nothing to do with the world. It has to do with God's people getting in a posture and a place and a position. So that's who I want to talk to in here today. I want to make sure that God's people are in that place, that posture and that position. Right. If God's people get in the right posture, the right place in the right position, then God is going to move on what's going on in the earth. That's where we begin to put ourselves. That's where the church has posited us. So really, it doesn't have nothing to do with um, our president, Democrats, Republicans. Let them pass stimulus bills. They can pass whatever they want. Wall Street can do whatever it want. It can roar back. It can drop. It can do with all of those things have nothing to do with what uh, what is going to turn around the things that God is calling for us to talk around today. That's important. That's important. That's important. Hey, Overseer Elton Johnson, I'm gonna call you. So I want you to. I want to get this pro. I want you to work this program. We we about. To, I'm telling. You, I think this program gonna work great for you in the ministry. And you and your wife get on here and start rocking, especially when it comes to relationship, because a lot of people need it. So because there's gonna be a lot of uh, Corona babies made. Amen. Bishop, thank you, Bishop. This is all because of you, right? So those postures and positions. So now if we're going to get in that posture and position, I want us to look at 2 Chronicles chapter number 7, uh, the whole chapter. And the reason why I want us to look at 2 Chronicles chapter number 7, the whole chapter is this, number one. I, it's hard for all preachers to ever preach a message that everybody think they already know. They've heard it so many times, it's hard for them to put it in the right place that they need to put it in. So I want to put this in the right place. Here we go. Solomon in chapter number six, 
dedicates the temple that his father, this temple is a gener it's been passed generation to generation. Father got the blueprints. Father heard from God, could not build it. So he passes it on to his son, Solomon. Solomon builds the temple. And then Solomon and the people come into the midst of the temple. And Solomon prays a prayer to God. And he prays a prayer that I think that is one of the major prayers that any, any sh Solomon, not only just being a king, but being a shepherd, really being, having a pastor's heart in his prayer. This is what he says. This is this is the number one thing I, I, I look for when I hear people telling me they're pastors. When, as an overseer in my fellowship, and when you're going to work with pastors, this number one thing I want to hear what people say about their pastors. Are they real about their members? Watch what Solomon says. Solomon says, Lord, these, I'm a paraphrase. If you go to chapter number six, he said, Lord, these people going to sin. They're going to make mistakes. And I just want to know when they make them, when they mess up, and when you have to chastise them, will you hear their prayer in this house? That's what he begins to say. Solomon does not say, Lord, they're going to be forever good. He knows his people. He knows the people. God has given them oversight. He knows their fight. He knows their proclivities. He knows their tendencies. And he says, it's like a, it's like a father who knows his children, a father or mother who knows their kid. I don't know about you. I grew up, my grandparents um, raised me, and my grandfather knew me. He would tell me stuff before I was going to do it, right? He knew what my problem was. He knew what my issue was. He knew what I dealt with. If you talk to my mama to this day, you can go and tell my mama and say, Frank did this. Frank did that. She said, Frank didn't do that. But then if you say, Frank did it, she said, yeah, that's his problem. Yeah, that's what he was done, right? And so at the end of the day, um, he's, a, he's a father and he knows his, he knows the, he knows God's people. He knows them. He has to pastor them. He's had to lead them, and he begins to dedicate. God then answers Solomon. When Solomon finished praying, fire came down from heaven. Sign that God is about to show them that this is his, his movement. Now, one of the things that people have to do in this time is be careful on speaking for God, because until God gives God, God, when God got done after Solomon got done praying. Now, I want you to understand because prayer is going to be critical in this moment and in this time. People must pray. Churches must pray. Leaders must pray. Then God responded, but he responded with a sign. For fire came down from heaven, consumed the burnt offerings and the sacrifice, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. I can spend all day in that moment of what happens when we pray because there is a power in your prayer. I wish you would hear me. There is a power. I, I really believe that God is getting us to a place. Now, when I grew up, they would let you pray. And most of the time when I hear people pray, they pray, Lord, thank you for this day. Father, thank you for, for guiding us and leading us. And Lord, thank you. And I want to pray for my family. Many times I hear people pray their selfish prayers in church. Um, when I hear people pray, I hear people pray testimony, testifying. And then when you get like the PhD in praying, like the deacons, when you can father, father of heaven, Isaac and father of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, father who, who got me, who watched over my lying down and my rising up, you know. And so when you get prophetic in all that praying and that's testimony praying, but I come to tell you there is prayer that is targeted. There is targeted praying. There is praying according to the scriptures. The Bible said the fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much. Meaning that God will respond to prayer that is effective, that prayer fervent, for prayer in the spirit, a prayer that can shake heaven, but it has to be effective. And many times we're praying, but we're not praying effectively. Mm, um, I wish we can go through all the scriptures for that. I mean, there's a couple of things that stops us. You remember uh, 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 men, how we treat our wives will affect our prayer. Um, um, where our heart is far as forgiveness of all people. If you have unforgiveness on your heart, it affects your praying. Come on, talk to me. Um, how if we don't take care of our kids, if we're not raising our children and doing it, affects our praying. Um, how our heart postures with God affects our praying. So what I'm saying to you, my brother and sister, is is that there are things that can hinder our prayer life going right. So it causes us. So we can scream, we can holler, we can have great words. But if our heart 
If our heart is not right with God, it then hinders how our prayer life will be, right? So we need to have an effective way of praying. And number one, we need to effectively know how to pray, having a right heart. And then we need to know how to pray according to the will of God, according to the purpose of God intended. So Solomon knows how to pray that he gets a response from God. Number one, do you have that? Solomon prays and knows how to get a response from God. He prays and he knows how to get a response from God. He prays and knows how to get a response from God. I want to ask you right now, what makes you any different than Solomon? Solomon is not a call to the fivefold ministry. We don't know him as a prophet. We just know him as a king uh -huh, who God's hand was on, who God really, we know him as a king and he benefits from his father, David. Come on, talk to me in here. He, because of his father, David. But if you look at Solomon, I mean, if you look at where he comes from, he comes from a relationship in which um, his father and his mother met in some unlikely terms, right? Mama was already married. David, uh, his father had other women and they hooked up. They, his, the older child died because of the hookup. And then the dad and, and, and the wives, and then David got Get, got her husband killed and now he takes her as a wife and Solomon is that child right he he he's he's a he comes from a chaotic place he comes from a scandalous uh a uh, uh, beginning of a relationship and yet God he still knows how to pray and get an answer from God. I, I, I want to pause it right there because I want people to know is I don't care how bad it is. I don't care where you come from. I don't care where you're at. You must know how to get a prayer through to God. You need to know how to get God to respond to the prayer that you had because most of us feel God responds to prayer because we're living a certain way. Well, if you understand Solomon's story, right? If you understand Solomon's way, Solomon, Solomon, by the time he gets done, 700 wives, 300 concubines. So, you know, <laughs> uh, um, 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 his, his life, his personal life will be in shambles to you. His personal life would not be the one that you would want. And I can go through the Bible of people who can who are true intercessors. Abraham is a true intercessor, but you wouldn't really pick him. He he he's, he he don't pay his child support like you want him to, right? He has a son by the name of Ishmael. But Abraham gives him gives him gives him one piece of food, takes him and his mom in the desert, and he drops them off. Abraham, he 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 asks his wife to lie in a scheme in order that he feels it's the only way that's gonna keep him alive. Abraham has some faults, but Abraham knows how to get intercession because Abraham was able to say, Lord, please, will, will you not destroy if there's 10 righteous, if there's a hundred righteous, if there's 50, if there's 10 righteous, and Abraham's intercession, Abraham's intercession for even Lot causes God to bring light out of Sodom before he destroys it. I want to talk to you in here today that your life does not have to be perfect for you to get a prayer through to God. Your life does not have to be perfect. You just have to learn the prayer formula. You got to learn how to effectively pray. That's why the Bible says that Jesus said, to, the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. And he said, pray in this manner. And he gives them an effective formula. We call it the Lord's Prayer. He gives them effective targets on what they hit in order to get a response from heaven. Solomon finished praying, fire came down, and it, it, it consumed the sacrifice. Because Solomon does not pray without sacrifice. Hear me. Hear me, my brother and my sister, that there has to be a sacrifice. You don't do, you don't come prayer and don't have sacrifice. You might be the sacrifice. That's why in my prayer, in my prayer time, my brother and my sister, I always pray. I got to first deal with me. I don't even deal with other people. Lord, Lord, clean me up. Cut off of me what should not be. Wash me. Purge me. Let me be the sacrifice that the fire burns, that consuming fire burns that stuff away. One of my favorite songs is, is uh, Consuming Fire, Consuming Fire, Burn It Away, because there are things on us, there are thoughts you had today, there are things right now you need to burn away. And sometimes it's hard for many of us, it's hard for many of us, because many of us are so educated, we know how to articulate and justify our foolishness, right? 
You know you're in fear right now, but we justify it by saying we OCD. Really, you just scared. Oh, who, who, who's you just spraying so much Lysol that everybody, people start coughing. You got, you make them feel sick, right? Because we're really, we're really in fear. But we want to call it, no, I'm clean, right? Um, um, uh, people who don't like people, people who, who, who are antisocial love this moment. I don't have to be by nobody. Right? That don't mean, COVID doesn't mean we can be mean. COVID doesn't mean that we can lock, be uh, shut out. COVID doesn't mean we can be in isolation. COVID, social distancing does not give you the right not to have the heart of God. Social distancing doesn't give us the right to, to turn people away who are hungry or who are hurting or who are broken. Social distancing doesn't give us a right to make people feel bad. We cannot utilize that moment or that time in order for that. That's not what social distancing should be about. And yet people are using it as, as, as a weapon and God is not pleased with it. And so we got to have sacrifice to say, Lord, in the midst of all the chaos, search my heart and make sure I'm doing what is right according to you. You ought to be able to put you as the sacrifice, right? And the glory of God filled the temple. Now watch what I'm going to tell you is that when we pray effectively, when we are willing to 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 to, to put ourselves as a living sacrifice, according to Romans chapter number, uh, is that 12? Um, um, uh, I, I, my brethren, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you live your life, um, that you... Um, Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service, right? So when we realize that when we put ourselves, so pray, effective prayer, um, being sac sacrifice, sacrificing our will for his will, sacrificing our self-sacrifice. When we add prayer, self-sacrifice, then the Lord can move. The glory of the Lord can fill the temple. You can feel the presence of God. God can move. That's why we have God. I, and I promise you, my brother and my sister, I, I, I used to hate going to concerts because what I would hear was great people singing, but I saw no prayer. I saw no self-sacrifice. So I saw no glory of God. I'm, I'm tired of going to churches where there's not uh, there's not prayer that is is the communication, the connection to God. There's no connection. There is no sacrifice. So there's no glory. And just because we can just because we can make you shout does not mean God filled the room just because we like to run around and, and, and we still got club in us doesn't mean God filled the room. And so, my brother and my sister, I need to connect by prayer. I need to have, I need to, I need to be, I need to be holified. I need to be, I need to be renewed. I need to be, I need to be sanctified by self-sacrifice. And then God says, you will see my glory. And he says, my glory came to the problem. The glory came. Now watch what happens. I'm almost done here. I didn't even get to chapter, I, we ain't even got to verse 14. Connection, prayer, connects us, connects us to heaven, right? Connects us to God. God responds with fire because there was self-sacrifice. There was the sacrifice of burnt offerings and sacrifices. The people brought the sacrifices they bought from themselves they brought. No one had to tell them. They brought all their sacrifices from themselves. It came out of their heart. So their heart put those things up and sacrifice happened. The glory of God filled the place. When God's glory fills the place, the priest could not enter the temple of the Lord because the glory of God filled it. Let me tell you this. There's no way you can continue. when If, if the glory of God was in your church, there's no way you can keep doing the order of service. I'm, I'm, I'm almost done here. I'm almost done here. We have, we have been praying, man, woman of God, there's no way. That if God's glory hit the building, you can go back to the same order of service. The, the, the priest's orders was for them to operate, to move in the temple. The, 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 the books, right, right? The first, our first five books, the law of the Torah, the Torah, right? The law gives the priests all what they're supposed to do, their jobs, their functions, their protocols to work. Protocol goes out the door when the glory of God is in the temple. He begins to be the presider.
of the service. No longer are the priests there to minister unto the Lord. When the glory of God comes in, therefore then, guess what happens? We then become those who will worship him. Ah, wish you would hear me in here today. You will worship him. There's been times, there's been, uh, we felt the move of God in places. And then we, then, 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 then we as preachers, well, all right, now it's time for us to move. All right. And we've tried to shift the glory of God because we wanted to be in control. And God has got us to a place. You can't shift his glory. You can't move. God has got us to a place where we are helpless Pastors, we are in a place right now where we can't control anything now. God says, that's the right place I want you to be. Because I want you to understand, just like you can't have church like you want to, just like COVID has made you seem helpless. He says, how much more is my glory? How much more is the glory of God? Can you ever get to a point of vulnerability? A place where, where you can say, Lord, less of me and more of you. This is the real place of faith. When you can't make it happen for you, when you can't do it, I just trust God. I don't have any more options. I trust God. I don't know if my job is going to be there when I get back. I trust God. I don't know when I get to the store, is there going to be toilet paper? I got to trust God. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to do martial law. I don't know if if, if, if the National Guard is going to shut things down. I don't know anything. All I do know is, is that, that my steps are ordered by the Lord. All I do know is, is that he will never leave me nor forsake me. All I do know is, is that, listen, that, that I was, Davis, I was young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor seized begging bread. All I know is, we're more than conquerors, we're overcomers. I don't know. I'm, I, I don't know uh, 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 whether when I'm feeling sick, I don't know if it's COVID, flu, I don't know what it is, but I do know Jehovah Rapha. I do know God is my healer. That's all I know. I can't tell you. I just know I trust His word. There comes a moment in time where we got to get out of God's way. Where, where, where leaders, we got to get out of God's way. Where, where, where our, our program has to get out of God's way. Where our traditions have to get out of God's way. God is trying to do something. He's trying to get his glory. Right now, in the midst of COVID, in the midst of all of this, don't you know God wants glory? Don't you know God wants glory? It is the finest hour of the church. God wants glory. Watch what happens. I'm going to help you here. When, when all Israel saw the fire coming down and the glory of the Lord above the temple. Now, listen. When Israel, listen what he said. When Israel saw, they saw the fire. They saw the fire and they saw the fire coming down. And they saw the glory of the Lord above the temple. Ooh, they saw the fire coming down from heaven, but they was also able to see the glory of the Lord. My brother and my sister, if you go with me to the book, I didn't put the scripture up, but I just felt the Holy Spirit move, uh, uh, just move on my heart. Um, go with me to the book of Acts chapter number two. Acts chapter number two. Acts chapter number two. I want you to see something in Acts chapter number two. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a mighty rushing wind from heaven filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that, that fell upon them or, or in the NIV separated and came to rest on them. They saw, watch this, God says, there is a part of me that is visible, visibly seen. My glory can be seen. This, this anointing that fell on them should be seen. It should be seen. It should be seen. I want to talk to the church. 
Or is the glory of God seen on you? Is the anointing of God seen on you? I'm not talking about us wearing certain type of shirts. I'm not talking about that you telling people to go to your church. I'm asking you, my brother and my sister, can they see the oil on you? Can they see the anointing on you? Can they see the rest, the, the, the favor of God on you? There ought to be visible representation of God's hand on your life. If you get your prayer life right, if you if you if you will put yourself on the altar and say, Lord, lessen me more of you. If you allow God's if you will allow those things to happen, then you will see the grace of God on you. People, we're in days where people like titles, people like positions, and have no visible glory on them. There's no visible anointing on them. And I come to tell you in this day and age, you don't need a name. You don't need a title when you have the anointing. When the anointing is on your life, when that, uh, when that, when that glory of God is on you for that, I'm talking to singers. I'm talking to leaders. I'm talking to people who are waiting for others to validate them. You're waiting for other people to tell you what you need to be. You're waiting for other people to help you build that business. You're waiting for other people to help you. You're waiting. I got to get the education. I got to get all of this. And you racked up a bunch of student loans instead of realizing that it's not the education. It's not not people it's the glory of God when God's glory is on you you're going to open up doors when God's glory is on you you're going to be able to move into places you're going to be able to do things you're going to be able to flow in the places God has called you I want you to get into a place where we see his glory on you now what what do you look like right now I'm done here what do you look like when people see you what do they say? Do you look like worry? Do you look like, do you look stressed? Now you going around talking about I'm blessed and highly favored. But that ain't what you look like. They don't see the, the, the favor of God on you right now. Because you got, I mean, you looking like body armor. Some of y'all got, you got masks on. You got a, 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 a turnip on you. You. I mean, you just look like RoboCop. Don't touch me. Move. Me being me. Can people see God's glory on you? Can people in the midst of this right now, in the midst of some of your hardest moments in life, can people look and see and say, Jehovah Jireh is her provider. God is her provider. Can they look at it and see? Can they look at it and see? I want to talk to you in here today. How did some women raise their kids on their own and their kids became great? Why? God, the glory of God, the anointing was on them. They were able to do what two parents needed to do as one. It wasn't, it wasn't that that was God's will for their life, but the anointing of God stepped in a situation and made things work. How is some of us living? If we, if you, I, I tell people all the time when they come to me for marriage counseling, one of the subject things is fill out a budget and people hate doing it because most of the time when you look, when you put out a budget, you know you over, you know you in the red, you know you in the negative and you ought to ask yourself, knowing all that your overhead is, every month you've been meeting it. How? That's visibly the glory of God. He's your provider. He's your provider. He's your provider. I'm talking to somebody in relationship right now. You don't even know how y'all made it this far. Y'all y'all fight, kick, scream. If people really knew how y'all fight, look, they would say y'all was dysfunctional. There are people right now in church that you, every every Sunday, y'all look like the, the power couple. And then when y'all get home, it looked like World War III. How did you make it this far? Not because God is okay with y'all fighting each other. Not because... God has been working on you, working on you, working on you. His glory has been on your life. You don't look like what you've been through because of the anointing of God. There's a visible anointing of God. You don't look like you come from the streets. You don't look like you've been in those places. And people be thinking that, oh, oh, you, you ain't never had it bad. What they don't know is what they're seeing is the visible power of God. They're seeing God's glory that has covered you. That you don't look like what you've been through. You don't look like your story. Allow God to cover you that you look like what he's called you to look. And that you don't look like what you've been through. I don't want to look like what. Why do you want to look like what you've been through? 
I don't, I don't want to look like that. Sometimes I go meet people and I see people. I see people that um from back in the day. And sometimes I just don't want to talk no more because they want to talk about what it used to be. I don't want to talk about that. I don't, want, I, don't, I don't want to talk about that. I don't. I don't. Come on. Some of us just don't want to talk about standing in welfare lines. Some of us don't want to talk about that. Some of us don't want to talk about what we had to be through and what, what happened. What, what, no, we don't want to talk about the rough rough sides. We thank God he brought us through and we want to move forward and, and move God. I thank God that I don't look like what I went through. Thank God that I don't look like I don't smell. I've been through the fire and I don't smell like smoke. I thank God that I've been I've been in, in in raging waters and never drowned. I thank God that through it all, I don't look like what I've been through. I told my brother and my sister, um, as we do this Bible study, I'm just going to go through Second Chronicles chapter number seven. Um, and I want you to begin to see what God has called us. Today, what we learned is, is that God wants you to have prayer that connects. Effective prayer connects to heaven. And in that prayer time, you got to, part of your prayer cannot be about what you need. It has to be about, Lord, fix my posture, my position, and my place with you. I want to be in the right, right, right place with God. Don't you? Don't you want to be in the right spirit, the right place with God? I'm... I'm not worried about COVID and all of that. I want to worry about where am I with the Lord right now? Where's my heart? One of my one my spiritual father, Pastor Newman, one of my spiritual fathers, my papa, one of my papas. God has given me, graced me with some great spiritual fathers. But Pastor Newman of the Family um, Christian Family Christian Center, and I believe they're in Ontario, Pomona now. Um. Pastor Newman became my father because he asked me a question that most people, uh, he didn't ask me how big my church was. He didn't ask me how my church was doing. He didn't ask me even how my marriage was doing. The first, his first question to me was, how, how is your heart with the Lord? Where's your heart at with God? Now with my spiritual sons, with my elders at my church, the question I want to ask is, is where's your heart? What is your heart's posture with God? I mean, we can fake it. You can have great church. I've I, I seen some of y'all preachers post. They talked about how many people viewed they thing. One thing I like about, uh, I was doing YouTube. Um, YouTube has a, YouTube studio has a new analytic. Not only tells you how many people viewed it, it tells you how long they stayed on it. Right? Because you can have six, six and seven thousand people view it, and they only watch four minutes of it, meaning that they didn't even get the word, they didn't even get the part that they needed to get. My brother and my sister, don't be blown away by numbers, right? It's not about that. Where is your posture with God? Where's your position? Where's your heart at with the Lord? I had a young man who I loved. His father, you know, went home to be with the Lord, and I loved the young man. And he came to my church, and I'm, 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 I'm holding on to him. I'm loving on him because I still love him. But he acted like I didn't know when he got in my church. He was high as a kite. I asked him to get up and come sing because I wanted him to get delivered in his own. While he was singing, I wanted God to still remind him that he still loved him. But I knew he was high as a kite. But people just want to be, but what has happened is, is because he's such a great singer, the church has used him. The church just wants to use him. Everybody wants to sing him praise and worship, but don't know he's dealing with depression. Don't know that he's dealing with mental health. And many of those, that's what's happening now with many of our people. They're getting used up by the church when somebody should just say, I just want to know where's your heart with the Lord. I know you know to sing the runs. I know you know how to sing the chords. I know you know how to work the circle of fifths um, 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 musician. I know you know how to do that. But I just want to know where's your heart really with God? 
Like, where are you really with God? How do you really feel? I, know, I don't want you to go through the motions anymore. And that's what I want to tell leaders. When we leave out of here, when when, when COVID passes, because it's going to pass away, it's going to pass over. I promise you, it's going to pass over. The blood of Jesus has been applied. Leaders, prophets, preachers, teachers, people of God have been praying against this thing. God, has, I'm, I heard the Lord say, I'm hearing their cry and I will respond. So I already know the Lord is going to cause this thing to pass over. But when it passes over, where's your heart with God? Are you going to go back to doing the same thing? Is your job going to be your God? Is your friends going to be your God? Is your family going to be your God? Is your boo going to be your God? Is Are you going to do the same thing? Are you going to go back to the same place? Are you going to go back to being a workaholic and not spending time with your kids? Are you going to go back to the same place of being ungrateful and mad? Are you going to go back to the same place of getting it? When they send a stimulus check, are you going to take it and spend it on things that don't matter? Where are you going to be at? Where is your heart with God? Well, has this been a game changer for you to say, I want, I got to open up every day I wake up, I ought to wake up with him on my mind. I ought to pray to him. I ought to make sure that I'm spending time and quality time with God and the things that God has connected me to. I want to know where your heart is with the Lord. Do you have accountability partners and accountability people who are going to ask you, where's your heart with God? Because I've seen preachers preach great messages and leave out of messages and go kill their wives because nobody asked them where their heart was with God. And I'm telling you in here today, the question is, is what's your posture? Where's your place? Where's your heart with God? And that's all I want to know. Where's your heart with God? Because if you got your heart in the right place, there's nothing you're in that God won't bring you out of. So that's my prayer for you today. Father, in the name of Jesus, my prayer is that, Lord, Father God, you teach us to pray a, an effective, a fervent, effective prayer, a prayer that connects to heaven. And so, Father, we come to you now. Bible said, our Father, which art in heaven. We understand, Lord, that where you're at, we understand your position, your authority and your power over our lives. Father, and we understand it. We understand that there's a name of reverence. There's a name that you have given us that 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 uh, uh, that all that all men might be saved by this name. There's a name that's above, Lord, that no, nothing above that nothing that is that it has authority over all things. That name of Jesus, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And so, in the name of Jesus, we come now praying father first of all not asking for anything but that you search us search our hearts search our minds search our spirit and father if you find anything in us that should not be we ask you remove it cut it out clean it out we want to be holy we want to be right you will withhold no good thing from the upright Lord father those who have a pure heart will see you and father we're declaring right now that you're washing us purging us cleaning us of thoughts uh-huh uh, 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 uh Lord father God things knowingly and unknowingly Lord thoughts in our mind and and Lord Actions we have done and father those things Lord father God that even people may think are small things Lord we have erred in you even today but God wash us purge us make us new clean us up make us better father fix us and mold us make us better husbands and wives make us better parents make us better brothers and sisters make us better Lord father God servants make us better family members make us better co-workers, make us better neighbors. Father, make us better citizens of your kingdom. And then, Father, my prayer is, is not only that you make us better citizens of your kingdom. Father, my prayer is that, Father God, that you cause us to be effective to those who we're connecting to. That you've never put us and connected us to people that you have not called for us, Lord, to transfer a flow, to move in their life, to, to, to cause them to be uplifted and to move into you. And so, Father, you, you have not connected me to anyone that, Father, you've not given me the, uh, uh, the ability, the power to influence, the ability to pour in. And so, Father, let us recognize 
healthy connections that are ordained by you and Lord unhealthy connections that we that we've brought upon ourselves give us a spirit of discernment we want to be discerners Lord Father God of the things that we should be connected to and the things that we shouldn't right now in the name of Jesus let us put things in right priority huh Father, if there's any unforgiveness in our heart, Lord, we ask, Lord, now, Lord, Lord, deal with us in the areas of where we have not let go. Deal with us in the areas of where we are still harboring pain and, and, and hatred and bitterness. Deal with us in the areas in which, God, that we have, Lord, Father, God, have rehearsed the memories of the pain and the offense. Deal with us in the places where we have not reconciled nor restored. Deal with us now. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Father, provide their daily bread. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We declare your kingdom is in the earth. We declare, Father, we're not thinking just about the United States. We're not thinking just about our neighbors, but we are kingdom-minded, kingdom-driven. We are citizens of the kingdom, and we see that COVID is nothing more than, Lord Father God, an attack of the enemy. We know it is nothing more than a wake-up call, Lord, that you are utilizing, Lord, for us to see and for you to gather up your saints to walk by faith and not by sight. We don't see this as the ending. We we are not going to allow the conspiracy theory conspiracy theorists to cause us to walk in fear. We're not going to allow the pessimism of the world to cause us to walk in fear. But COVID-19 has a name and it must bow to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and we declare by the power of the Holy Ghost that we operate with a kingdom mindset and a kingdom we Lord we declare we're not going to lose our jobs. We're not Go, Lord, Father God, we're not going to lose sleep. We, the, we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We are the lenders and not the borrowers. We are blessed coming in and blessed going out. So one door closing only opens us up to a better promotion and another open door. We declare it right now in the name of Jesus. Thy will be done. God, let this be a moment that it ain't about our will, our, our, what we want, our five-year plan, our ten-year plan. Father, calls us to, 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 to put our will under submission to your will. We want your will for our life. Reveal your will. In, in, in this time of Lord Father God's safe, while people are, uh, 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 are in homes, in this safe home moment, this safer home place, in this place where we're limited and where we can go, make this be the moment in a time where they get revelation about your will for their life. Because maybe somebody don't need to go back to that job because it's not in your will. Maybe somebody don't need to go back to that relationship because it's not in your will. Maybe somebody does not need to go back to that place they were at because it's not in your will. We want to be in the will of God. And then last, Father, cut this prayer. We kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Or daily bread. I declare everyone who's watching. They daily needs be met. Oh God. I know it's, it's hard times. I know. I declare their daily needs be met. I declare money comes from the east, west, north, and south. And meet every bill. I declare right now. Their daily needs are met. I'm talking about God. The social distancing won't make them isolated. I'm declaring that this spirit of fear will not cause them to have mental health problems. I'm declaring right now the anxiety will reside. I'm declaring right now, Father, that we will not allow what we have been going through to play with our mind, that we have, we have, Lord, our minds are healthy, our spirits are healthy, our finances are healthy. I declare our families are healthy. God, I'm declaring we're in a place of health and wealth and wellness and greatness, not because, Lord, Father God, we need it for tangible, but because we are children of the Most High God. And so I decree that. I declare that. 
And I believe it in Jesus name. Amen and amen. My brother and my sister, thank you. I know I only got through um, verses 1 and 2. Hopefully it blessed you. Are there any questions? Let's go. You have any questions for me? I'm going to take the questions. I'm going to take some questions. I'm going to take some questions. Do you have any questions? Any questions about anything? We'll take questions at this time. Praise the Lord. I will take questions if you write them. Take a few things. Any questions? Any prayer requests? Anything? We'll take it now. Amen. And then um, we'll go. We'll start back um, sometime this week, probably with verses three through five, three through six. Any questions of anything? Any questions that you have? I'll take them. I'll take them. I'm looking for them. But please write them quickly because I'm hungry. Oh, Geraldine, you know, I love you. I want to see you back at church. I need you back at church. Man, what's up, Pastor Bolden? How are you doing? How is it going? Um, let's connect, bro. Let's connect. Um, I just want to make sure that you are able to um you, you you're getting online and your stuff. We want to get we want to help you to get that. You have a great word in your belly, and we want to um we want to get that out to the nations and the people and let them know. If you're looking for a church on the west side, you want to look at a church on the west side off of Adams, man, Pastor. Look up uh, Pastor D, Pastor Dexter, great man of God. Anybody else? Any questions? Any, any, any questions? Any, any questions? Well, praise the Lord, man. If you need any questions, uh, you can look up. I think my phone number is on Facebook. If you go down underneath my profile, you can call me. You can send me a text. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. That's the place I'm at. Uh, for all my church people, thank y'all. Um, thank you guys who allowed me to um, rock this and roll this. And then uh, I'm, I thank you. I've seen even my bishop was on, and I thank God for him tuning in. And then I'm going to rock with him and call him so I can find out. Uh, if y'all want to check, um, if you really want to uh, check how this program works, um, go to Unity um, Christian Fellowship. It may be Unity Christian Fellowship. You can look it up right now, um, and uh, you can watch how the pros work, work this this program but y'all give us give us two weeks give me two weeks i like it um if i'm gonna ask my church members how they like it and give us two weeks and we're gonna rock this thing man and we're gonna make it big i believe no matter what size your church is no matter what size your ministry is you can do things with excellence amen and you can have it in an excellent way all right god bless y'all i'm signing off i'm going to go play with my uh my baby girl and my baby boy I'm going to go play with them and go eat some good food. And um, I was going to go play a game with my wife, but I don't, I don't want to beat her that bad today. You know what I mean? I feel the oil is on me. I feel the oil, the visible power of God is on me. And I know everything I do, I'm going to do it with overcoming power. So I won't do that tour today. We'll just watch a movie. Y'all be blessed. Enjoy enjoy yourselves god bless you for my church family you can check this out this will be on our youtube um our youtube page everybody subscribe to our youtube page it's called uplift tv it is this symbol that you see on here if you see our icon uplift tv check it out not uh, um somebody else tried to get our uplift tv but it's uplift tv the 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 real deal um with the u with the arrow going up uplift tv check it out um, subscribe to us. You'll start beginning to see. We don't have a lot of videos on old videos, but we're about to really utilize utilize it to push some great things in the kingdom. Amen. God bless you. Love y'all.